Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So, I am jumping on to do a special reading here for the last, the, the new moon in Aries that we had just a few days ago. Um, it was Monday night. If you were here in the United States, I'm in the Northeast. Um, I believe it was the 8th. Yes, the 8th. Um, and I'm doing, I, I don't normally do readings for like the food, the moon phases, mainly just because I can't really like, I don't always have time to do all of them, to like keep up with all of them. So um, I really only do them if I'm feeling specifically called to do so. And I really feel a pull to do a reading for this last new moon that we had. This last new moon was pretty unique. Um, for the most part, it felt like a full moon and like a really supercharged full moon. And it's very interesting because, um, I don't know if any of you are aware or follow her already, but Simone of Simone Ascending, hey Simone, um, she did a reading for the new moon before it actually happened. And in that reading, um, it's titled, uh, Abundance, I believe, but in that reading, she spoke about how it felt like the energies felt like it was a full moon in the sense that there was a lot of releasing happening. Full moons are normally for when release happens, but a new moon is normally for when you're trying to manifest, you're trying to put intentions to manifest out into the universe. Whereas with the full moon, you put your intentions to release certain things out into the universe. Um, but here in this last new moon, it was very much a purgy release type situation. Um, something really interesting happened the actual night of it. Um, it was Monday night, for me at least, uh, for me and those that I'm going to speak of that experienced this together. Um, it was Monday night and um, it was like, I had planned, I, I had gotten home from um, from my shift at Om Shanti Bookshop. If you're in New York City, come see me at Om Shanti on Mondays from 11 to 5, yeah. But I had just finished my shift and I was going to, I had plans to go out and hang out with some friends, have dinner with some friends that night. And so I had some free time. So I was like, whatever, let me just like hang out. I smoked a little weed, you know, I was watching TV. Just, I was watching, I was watching the first episode of the second season of Will and Grace, right? And about halfway through, not even halfway through the episode, all of a sudden I had to turn it off because I had this really insane, well, not insane, but a pretty strong like panic attack. Um, and it absolutely came out of nowhere. And it was incredibly strong. And it was surrounding situations um, that, you know, I had been experiencing recently with some other people in my life. And it was one of those situations where all of a sudden I was just feeling a bunch of shame and guilt surrounding the situation. And it was completely foreign, foreign, completely out of left field. And it was extremely intense. So all of those classifications put together, the fact that it was out of nowhere, the fact that I really didn't have any reason to feel that way, um, the fact that, you know, it was so strong, um, those were all things that led me to believe that it wasn't anything really that I had done myself. Um, it was something that was being almost something, I, I, at first I thought it was like a collective thing that I was just picking up on. Shortly after that, two of my friends texted me and were like, did you feel that wave that just hit? And I was like, yes, actually <laughs> I did. And it was like all, all, all three of us just felt this really intense, like triggering energy. Um, and so the next day, the when I woke up the next day, my first thought was to do a daily reading. And I have been wanting to do daily readings for some time. I just don't have the time right now to be consistent with it. If I'm going to start doing daily readings, I want to be consistent. I want to, I want to do them every day. Um, and I did, but, and I don't really have that flexibility right now. And so when I felt that urge to do a daily reading, I didn't follow through with it. But later on in the day, I was thinking about it and I was like, I was putting all the pieces together and I was like, wait a second. We all felt that wave last night and that was actually, that was around the, that was the new moon energy. And then I went, oh, I should do a reading on this. So here we are. So um, because it was so intense, um, because it was such an extreme situation. And actually, if, if you follow her, then you know that Aluna Ash put out a video. I think it was last night. Um, I'm recording this on Wednesday the 10th. So I think it was like, like late, late last night. 
she put out a video talking about why is this why is this so new moon so intense and she explains um, a lot of the physics behind why the moon, this new moon actually felt like a really supercharged full moon. Um, and if you're interested in gaining a little bit more knowledge of that, I would recommend that you check that video out. Actually, I think I'm going to put a link to the video in the description box below um, so that you can just eat, find it that much easier. Um, but she does really explain a lot of why it felt like such a full moon when it was really just a new moon. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a mirror reading, okay? And this mirror reading is for, we're going to call it just for the Awakened Collective. Um, sorry guys, I have a bunch of stuff under my desk. Um, we're just, it's just going to be for the Awakened Collective. Anyone that um, felt the energies, um, when, you know, was triggered by anything, dealt with a lot of purgy, anyone that just felt it and was like, what the F was that, Yeah which is the title of this video, conveniently. Um, so it's really not for anyone or any group of specific individuals. It's for Twin Flames, Lightworkers, uh, Starseeds, um, uh, just your average human being. I don't, I, I'm really not putting any sort of classification on this. It's just for anyone um, that wants to know what was going on. Okay, and so I'm doing a mirror reading. If you're unfamiliar with those, for me, a mirror reading is where I take two separate decks. Um, so I have the Arcanum, not the, excuse me, not the Arcanum. I have the Tarot Apocalypsis deck here. And then um, I'm also using the, the Illuminati deck. They're like sister decks, yeah? Using the Illuminati deck, okay? I'm taking these two decks, and I'm going to be channeling the energies. Uh, I'm going to be channeling masculine energies and feminine energies, okay? Now, I'm doing it masculine and feminine because all of us have masculine and feminine energies within us, and all of us resonate, uh, tend to resonate with more, more with one side than the other at various times in our lives. Um, and so, uh, because that's an easy way for all of us to relate. I'm going to be channeling the energies of the two. Now, this is not just for those who identify with masculine and those who identify with feminine, okay? We all have both of these energies. So if you're not familiar with me, you then you wouldn't know that um, normally when I do these mirror readings, I usually do them for the Twin Flame Collective, and I... I my intention is to have people focus on the masculine and feminine energies within, okay? So use this as a way to understand what's going on with the two sides of you, okay? One side being masculine, the other side being feminine. Um, uh, you might not resonate with both sides. You might resonate with one more than the other, but the, the intention here is to understand or get an idea of what's going on with the, with the energies within us surrounding this, uh, this last new moon in Aries. What were we going through? Uh, what are we purging? What are we releasing? What just, just what the F was that? <laughs> right? Okay, cool. And this is a divine conversation, guys. So if you would like, smoke them if you got them. Grab yourself a cocktail, a glass of wine, a drink, a beer, a cider, whatever tickles your fancy. I will not be partaking in this one, mainly because I have some private personal readings that I'm going to be doing right after this. But I will most likely be re-watching this video with a glass of wine later. Yes? <laughs> okay. So, um, yes. Let me, uh, let me adjust the camera here. Alrighty, alrighty. So we've got our two decks. We've got the the deck symbolizing the masculine energies, which is going to be... I'm sorry about... Please excuse the lighting, guys. I did um, move into a larger room in my apartment, but the lighting is still kind of... is a little iffy. Um, so bear with me. Uh, hopefully yeah, you guys can still see everything. But I've got my two decks here. The deck on the left is going to symbolize the masculine energies. The deck on the right is going to symbolize the feminine energies. And I will be closing the reading with some oracle guidance. And I'm hearing that's going to be from the Lightworker Oracle. I might pull one more, maybe, maybe the Crystal Mandala, but mostly just the Lightworker Oracle. All right, everyone? Cool. So without further ado... Nine minutes in, <laughs> let's get to the reading. If there's anyone that would like to timestamp the reading, you feel free to go right ahead. Um, but I do think it's good to hear the intro 
especially for this because this is a special reading okay this is not like just like a normal thing this is a once and once this is a this is a special reading so there's some background that you might want to hear okay either, either way if you want to go ahead I, I don't mind all right everyone let's settle in everybody take a deep breath let's just take a moment to connect hi spirit Please make me a clear channel for the Awakened Collective. Please bring us the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved at this moment in time. Please help us understand what we were dealing with what, with this Aries new moon in terms of the masculine energies represented by the deck on the left and the feminine energies represented by the deck on the right and please help us how our experiences, both from the masculine point of view and the feminine point of view, are interacting with each other and also how they could potentially be mirroring each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so I'm going to start with the masculine energies shuffling for the masculine energies in the pre-shuffle before I started the video um, with this deck for the masculine energies a few flyers came out and actually a few of them up, came out twice we had now let me see let me see if I can remember here we had the lovers pop out twice um, the seven of Pentacles popped out um, the fool also popped out twice and the star came out. Um, so to, for me, as far as the masculine energies go, um, there was this new moon really helped set the stage to embark on a brand new journey, okay? And there was a big choice that was made with the lovers, um, and it was in terms of harvest in the, in the Seven of Pentacles. So being, what are you reaping right now? What have you sown in the past and what is that yielding to you right now? Or at the same time, it could be what are, what is gestating? What are you waiting for or what are you waiting to come through to for fruition for you? Um, and also an energy of what are your wishes here? What are your truest heart's desires? What is it still that still needs to be healed when it comes to the star? What, what, what are you focusing on? What are your wishes and your desires and your goals? And are you going to take that leap of faith with the fool? Okay. Um, but with the fool, mostly it was like the, sa the stage had been set or this, this new moon was actively helping you set the stage for you to embark on a brand new journey, okay? Those, that's what, that was for the masculine energies. Um, it's, really, it's really just an energy of setting the stage to really go after what it is you truly desire and to really embark on a brand new journey and start onto something new and not worry. I, I, honestly, I, was, I just heard not to give a flying fuck about it. <laughs> <laughs> and to just like just be ready and to do it all right masculine collective masculine energies i'm going to give you one more shuffle cool and we're going to cut the deck here Boop. all right masculine energies masculine collective your energies are set Let's get into the feminine collective now for just a moment. So for the feminine energies, um, there were some flyers that came out. Off the top of my head right now, I remember it was definitely the Four of Wands came out. Um, feminine collective, feminine collective. But now I'm drawing a blank on the rest of them. Um, I know I know the Four of Wands came out, and that, to me, was poignant, just mainly because I've been seeing the Four of Wands a lot lately. Um, that's just something personal for me, so I guess that's why it was easier for me to remember that. I just don't remember what the other ones were that came out. Because it wasn't many, actually. It really wasn't many. 
um, it was more of the divine masculine, or I'm sorry, the masculine energies that were coming, speaking forward. But for the feminine collective, it's really, this is about foundation. Um, you know, it's about union, marriage. <laughs> Marriage. I really feel like there's there's a lot of energy of marriage in the air when it comes to the feminine collective. Um, if you're resonating with that, I mean, that's a big twin flame thing right now. Um, I personally am a twin flame. Um, and I, I just keep hearing marriage, marriage. And literally, like, I'm hearing it right now. And even in the, like, the, just the, the, the regular readings that I've been watching lately, it's just life partnerships and marriages and soulmates and all that are really... The universe is really lining us up to bring us what we desire, especially when it comes to, um, you know, romantic relationships, partnerships, twin flame unions, if that's something you still even desire. Um, but just un alignment with the type of union that will really work for you. Um, I'm seeing yellow for the feminine collective. I'm also seeing orange. And so this is... a. Um, I really feel like this new moon has helped you align, come into greater alignment with what you you would be with with what would be emotionally fulfilling for you, and also um, the direction you want to go in. Your drop. Oh, okay. We we've got flyers here. Very interesting. Um, we've got the emperor and the empress. Both are in reverse. The Two of Swords is also here with the in reverse, and then we also have the Nine of Wands. So with the Two of Swords and the Emperor in reverse, there is a lot of energy, excuse me, there is a lot of energy of releasing uh, indecisiveness, um, releasing control. That's the biggest thing that I'm getting here, releasing a desire to control the situation. And that's not, that's just, that's just talking about releasing control and how your desires are brought to fruition, okay? Um, it's still maintaining the mastership and the ownership of your, your domain, but it's also leaving it up to the universe to say, okay, bring this to me however, however it best fits, okay? Um, with the Empress in reverse here, okay, well, what I'm getting, what I'm hearing <laughs> what I'm hearing with this, especially with the Emperor and the Empress, the Emperor and the Empress are kind of at odds with each other um, when it comes to the Twin Flame Collective specifically. Now, again, this is not something, this is not a reading that's specifically uh, aimed at Twin Flames, um, but that energy is going to come through. I am one of them. I am a Twin Flame Guide. So that energy is going to come through, and for the most part, I feel like it's really going to be a lot of in, in twin, uh, individuals that I rec uh, identify with the Twin Flame journey that are going to be watching this. I'm hearing that for what I'm what I'm channeling right now, for what these flyers are talking about here, um, the twins are at odds with each other. And it's not even because it's like a it's an ego battle thing. It's more of a vibrational thing. Um, for uh, for the most part, a lot of and especially some of the people that you know, some of my friends that I've connected with recently that are on this journey, um, the feminine energies really have. Yeah, look at that. Justice is underneath the Nine of Wands, and the King of Swords is in re underneath the Empress. Um, interesting. So I just. The twins are at odds with each other, but it's a vibrational thing, guys. It's that the feminine energies have really leveled up. They've really upgraded, and they're absolutely looking in an opposite direction. They're looking in a different direction. Um, they're also, there is an energy of no longer being indecisive or actually really starting to see things clearly when it comes to the relationship with the divine masculine. Um, with the nine of wands here, there's perseverance. Just keeping on, keep moving on, you know, keep fighting on. This is, this is an energy of fighting for or continuing to move towards what it is you truly desire in life. It's um, not giving up, 
Okay. There may be, there may be a situation where you've come to a realization that you are just not wanting to be with your twin, um, or it's just not really going to happen anytime soon. If at all, um, I'm not declaring that, that this is, this is what it is, but this might be how you're feeling at the moment. Um, and so with the nine of wands, you're persevering, you're pushing through because it's like, okay, well, regardless of what's going on with this other person, I definitely want to keep moving towards what I truly desire in life. And the fool from this deck just caught my eye, which is mirroring between the masculine and the feminine, because the feminine is really taking a leap of faith and embarking on her journey and doing what it is she wants to do to, to get what it is she wants in life, regardless of who it comes from and how it comes to her. Because for the most part, those in the feminine collective have really been working on their self-worth, have been working on their mission, have been working on themselves and becoming whole again, and it's starting to pay off, okay? Awesome. One more shuffle for the feminine collective, and then we're going to start with the feminine energies here, okay? Yeah, I'm really seeing yellow. I'm seeing yellow and I'm seeing white for the divine, for, I'm just going to call it that, the divine feminine collective. So it's, um, it's really about illumination, drive, willpower, um, and maintaining divinity of being protected by the divine. Okay. Excellent. So, so, oh man, look at this guys. We're starting off with the feminine collective. We're starting off with the fool. All right. So we already have mirroring going on between the masculine and the feminine. But the, this is exactly what I was just saying here. The feminine is ready to go. Okay. She has done her work. She is prepared. She's ready to move on. And this new moon, um, no matter how like strong it might've been for you, it might've been really super purgy. It might've knocked you off your ass, knocked you on your ass. Um, you might've experienced the opposite. You might've experienced, um, really good energy surrounding this. Uh, but what you have here, either way, regardless, there has been a lot of energy space, energetic space that has been cleared so that now something fresh and new can really come in. With the Fool here, I really feel an energy of just clean and clear space, okay? We do have the Four of Cups. We have the Knight of Pentacles, but we also have Strength, okay? So... Um, now, some of us in the Feminine Collective are still dealing with some unrequited love situations here, being taken for granted. Or, on the other hand, you might be, you might be taking something for granted. Either you're taking something to grant, for granted or there's someone else around you that's not quite accepting an offer just yet, okay? This could be a situation where there's a soulmate coming into your life. Could be, if you're a twin flame, it could be your divine masculine. If you don't um, identify with like the twin flame situation, it could just be a soulmate, a, a life partner, um, a karmic partner or something. Um, this doesn't have to be romantic though. This is a general reading guys. So it really could be anything. Okay. But there's an offer that's trying to be made here. There's something that's trying to begin and especially connected with the fool here that I really feel like for the most part, there's something that the universe is working on trying to offer you. Okay. And so with the four of cups energy, this is not necessary, especially in relation to, um, this new moon, this isn't necessarily, um, the offer being rejected, okay? It's more of an energy of they're needing, needing space to be cleared in order for this cup to be taken, all right? And with the page of, I'm sorry, the Knight of Pentacles here, those steps are being taken, okay? There's slow progress. There's steady movement. There's methodical and logical movement. Slow and steady, there's, there's um, positive progress here when it comes to actively act, uh, realizing this new start, this new chapter, okay, with the fool. Strength in reverse. Feminine energies, their feminine collective really has stepped into their own power. They really have been working on taming their, their inner beast, taming themselves, learning about themselves, knowing themselves, growing stronger in confidence and all. This is the confidence to take this leap of faith and move on to something new, embark on a new journey, yeah? 
for the uh, the energies, the surrounding energies around this this shift in this new moon. First set for the feminine collective, we have. Oh yes, look at that, the ten of swords. Well, that is very very appropriate. Very appropriate, okay? Um, feminine Collective, you really come, or we've really come to a point where it's like, we're done. We're done with the backstabbing. We're done with the negative cycles. We're done with the hurt, the pain. We're done with the karma. We're done feeling stabbed in the back. The Ten of Swords is like an energy of the worst is over, okay? You've reached the end, and next you have the Ace of Swords, where you have a brand new sense of uh, wisdom, knowledge, I even hear excitement to move forward, okay? Ten of Swords is coupled with <laughs> the Queen of Swords. Yes, absolutely. And it's very interesting. For me personally, I do rec I do resonate with the Feminine Collective a lot. Um, even though I have been working on balancing the masculine and feminine energies with me within me, I do resonate mostly with the Feminine Collective. And I come up as the Queen of Swords a lot like all the time. Um, but, but aside from that, I really have personally, I've been working on cutting out the drama, cutting out the bullshit. If something is not an energetic resonance for me, I'm no longer going to hold on to it or I'm no longer going to continue to put myself in that sort of situation. And that's what this is saying here with the 10 of swords and the queen of swords. The queen of swords is finished done with the drama. She's been through the ringer because she's gotten to the Ten of Swords now and she's much wiser in a sense to not let this shit happen anymore. She's done with it. So, um, even if you didn't personally trigger yourself into, you know, getting any, into any sort of purging situation, um, it was actively triggered for you. Now, for me personally, I rec I came to the understanding that that panic attack that I experienced on Monday night was an effect of a sort of psychic attack, okay? Because there was, because a major shift happened and some of these darker energies that are wishing to, to hold us down and keep us under their manipulation tactics and continuing to um, siphon energy from us, uh, these energetic vampires and succubi and all that kind of thing, um, they they were actively attacking many individuals who resonate on these higher vibratory levels in order to, you know, get a quick fix, bring people down, put a wrench in the system, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, that just served to help me even more in cutting myself out of it. Why? Because I said to myself, okay, obviously this is not me. This is a, this is a foreign attack. This is something else that has nothing to do with me. And instead of staying home and in bed and, and, you know, hiding from everyone like I actually kind of wanted to do, instead I said, no, hell no, I'm not going to let this bring me down and I'm going to go out to dinner with my friends. Why? Because I'm done with this energy. Ten of Swords, Queen of Swords. She's done with the drama. She's not about to put up with it, okay? The Queen of Swords also is a divorcee, somewhat a woman or an individual that is recently divorced, I don't know why I'm feeling urged to say that, but maybe there could be a situation where you're in some sort of a, a, a commitment, a marriage or something that you're finally done with. And you're saying, no, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And the major reason as to why this can be felt as a um, full moon in the purging, the releasing aspect of it is because instead of, instead of putting forth intentions to attract, we're actively, we were actively releasing during this new moon. Um, and that's mainly because we are, we are taking the steps to manifest. And one of those re one of those things was to release a bunch of things. So it's like an action oriented thing. Whereas the new, so the full moon to me personally, I'm seeing it this way. The full moon is like the feminine aspect where, um, you're being, you're, you're, you're making yourself receptive in a way. Whereas the new moon, you're putting forth the intention to bring something to, you, you know, you're putting forth out, putting out the action to do something, right? So we, it was kind of flipped, but this time we were putting out the action to re, to attract something in the sense of cutting something out. Okay. Good Lord. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> second set of energies for the Feminine Collective, we've got, yes, the Ace of Swords. Look, guys, we, we literally progressed from the Ten to the Ace. And I mentioned that, okay, at once you, you've done. The worst is over. You're done with the drama. You learn, you know all you need to know, and now you can progress to the Ace. That's fantastic. Fantastic, Feminine. Okay, the Ace of Swords is coupled with 
Ooh, the Eight of Swords. So, there's still some anxiety here. Maybe. There's still some entrapment here. Maybe. For the most part, though, what I'm getting is that this new moon actively helped you to see, helped to illuminate for you where you have been trapped, where you have been stuck in your head, stuck up in your mind. For me personally, I'll use my situation as an example. Again, um, I was being, there were all these things that were being thrown in my face and I was being made to feel shame for certain actions that I've taken that were completely harmless. And that was one of the things that helped me understand that this was a, a, an outside attack. But again, it also illuminated places that I didn't need to be worried about anything. Okay, and so that's a lot of a, a lot of these purgy things, a lot of these triggers that are coming up are illuminating the entrapment for you. They're illuminating places or uh, uh, sp spots that need to be healed, released, let go of, cleared away, so that the new journey can start. I, and and I'm keeping look at this, guys. This new moon, especially for the feminine collective, this new moon energies is, are are highly are, are all mental. It's all mental because all four of the surrounding energies for that new moon period are swords energies, okay? So this was extremely helpful in cutting things out. The challenge surrounding this new moon in Aries, wow, more swords, the five of swords. Yeah, five of swords is coupled with <laughs> the nine of swords. So this was all mental for the feminine collective, all mental. And the challenge being the psychic attacks, the anxiety, the sleepless nights, all of the things that have been keeping you up in, at night, all of the things that you've just been stressing over. These are psychic attacks from, from non-physical beings. This is combativeness. This is a shit starter energy from the people around you. This is probably even Venus in retrograde. Okay. I do feel really good about this. I do feel like for the most part, this has been surmounted, even, maybe even with ease, or at least more ease than you may have had in the past because of the illumination, because of the awareness that you've already cultivated. Yeah. So the, the outcome, we'll say, the, the closing message for the, fe for, for the feminine collective surrounding this New moon in Aries, we have <laughs> the Queen of Cups. This is definitely the divine, or the feminine collective, the feminine energies here. The Queen of Cups is coupled with, ooh, that's very interesting. The moon in reverse. My, my, my. Now that's really, that that's, I'm not gonna lie guys, that's really fucking cool. The, the coolest thing about it is that there are no more, I'm curious to see. I don't think there, it's looking like the moon is literally the only card in the deck right now that is reversed. I'm literally, I'm going to go through each and every one of these cards right now. And the moon is the only one that is in reverse. Wow. Wow. That is, I swear, I swear to God, guys, I swear to God, the moon is the only one that's reversed right now, okay? Um, and that's with the Queen of Cups. So what I'm getting here is it's not the full moon because you see this, this moon is full here. It's the new moon, okay? But this new moon has helped, number one, illumination, illuminate things here because you do have the Ace of Swords. And the moon is in reverse here. The moon in reverse talks about secrets coming out, not being held onto, but re being released. And with the Queen of Cups here, it's like releasing fear, releasing anxiety, releasing pain, releasing doubt. Um, Clearing space away for you to really hold your emotional value, okay? You also could have been felt very psychically aware or even more so after this moon because the Queen of Cups is very intuitive, very psychically aware, okay? But you've got the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups here in your spread. That's like the, old, the, the closing message is that, um, you know, you really had a chance for the feminine energies, you really had a chance to really hunker down and get back, get to more of your own essence, okay? And to clear away the illusions, clear away fears and all that great stuff. That, 
That's excellent. I am really excited to see what's going to come out for the Masculine Collective now. Okay. So for the Masculine Collective, you've... Oh, boy. <laughs> you've got the devil. Yeah. All right. The devil is coupled with the Eight of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles here. Okay. So for the masculine collective, what are we what are we getting into? Well, some of you masculines, I'm getting an energy of <laughs> I'm getting an energy of some of you may not have even been aware of what was going on because with the devil and the eight of pentacles here, you're so wrapped up in your work. You're so wrapped up in maybe socially being being socially acceptable um that you're you're just kind of like drowning yourselves out. You're drowning out any sort of sense of connectedness, um, or at least just during this this new moon period, because it was so heavily charged. Um, you probably I'm excuse me, guys. To the pause. I'm just trying to channel here. You probably just immersed yourself in work, or you probably partied it away. Um, yeah, this just felt like this. Really, just what I'm getting for the masculine collective is um, escapism. Escaping into your fears, maybe. There might have been a relapse into, like, uh, uh, substance abuse, partying, overworking. There might have been, and especially with the Ten of Pentacles here, there might have been a heavy emphasis on career, finances, um, but probably even family life, too. Because the Ten of Pentacles does talk about families. But also... <laughs> So that's just for some of you. For others of you, because you have the devil here, you have an energy of understanding where your codependencies are. Is that in overworking? Is that in partying and French and, and toxic friends, third party situations, uh, the bachelor lifestyle? Is that uh, family situations? Um, yeah. Let's get into the rest of the energies here to get an understanding, a better understanding. But um, this is definitely an energy of releasing these kinds of, releasing these scenarios in order for you to be a little more authentic. Or at least you had the opportunity, should you take it, should you have taken it or not, okay? Uh, for the Masculine Collective, the first set of surrounding energies around this new moon, you have, there's the mirroring, guys, the Fool. Okay, and I told you, the Fool came out twice in the flyers for the Masculine Collective, okay? So there's uh, there is definitely an energy of taking a leap of faith or starting something new. For the, for the Feminine Collective, those energies are in the overall, okay? So the Feminine is ready, is, is about to take that leap, whereas the Masculine is getting there, okay? The, the Masculine is identifying the situations that keep him or her, from embarking on this new journey, okay? Now, I'm going to relate this to you and help you guys understand how I see this reading because I do I do rec resonate more with the feminine collective, but I also, you know, I, I, just like everybody else, I have masculine energies within, and I do work with them quite a lot. And so over this full moon um, and then the day after, I'm not, not the full moon, I'm sorry, the new moon, and then the day after the new moon, uh, I dealt with a lot of triggers. And in these triggers, I started to, I, I, it helped me identify this, these obstacles here, the devil, the eight of pentacles, and the three of cups, these obstacles, it helped me identify the obstacles that keep me from embarking on this new journey with the fool that I've been manifesting here, Okay. Um, so for the Masculine Collective, this is how you're handling the situation. The Fool is coupled with the Page of Swords. All right, so look, we're getting into more mental energy here. So again, this is, like I was saying, understanding what you need to do to clear to clear away the blockages for this new manifestation, this new journey to take off. 
okay? It's fantastic. Second set of surrounding energies for the masculine collective, we have the Seven of Swords. Yeah, deception, lies. How have you been holding yourself back from this? How have you been deceiving yourself? How, what, what has been, who has been stealing from you? Who has been taking from you? How have you been overworking, overgiving, and undermining your own self, okay? Seven of Swords is coupled with judgment. All right. So, have you been deceiving yourself in not answering this call that's been, that's been, calling out to you. What's keeping you from doing this? Who is keeping you from answering this call? Who, who and what, who or what, excuse me, has been keeping you from resurrecting, from reconciling with yourself, from reconciling with the universe, from reconciling with, I don't know, someone else in your life? Yeah? This is definitely all about illumination. That's what I'm hearing for the divine mas for the masculine collectives here. And you can say divine masculine, you can say divine feminine, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just I'm channeling for everybody here, okay? Okay. So far, so good. Again, we're still keeping with a lot of the... A lot of um, mental energy here, okay? There's a lot of mental clearing happening for both masculine and feminine. And I wanna also, I wanna, I wanna look at the mirroring here that's happening just in the overall energies between masculine and feminine. For the feminine, we have um, one major arcana and that's the Fool and two minor arcana, the Four of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. For the masculine, we have one major arcana, which is the Devil and two minor arcanas, the Eight of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. Pentacles and Cups, Pentacles and Cups. That's really cool. And we also have the Three of Cups, for the masculine, the four of cups for the feminine. That's really cool. Okay, the challenge for the masculine masculine collective in terms of this new moon, we have the two of swords. Oh, sorry guys, my phone is going off. But didn't the two of swords come out somewhere else? I thought it came out for the feminine. The Two of Swords came out somewhere else. And actually, that might have been one of the flyers for the feminine. But we have the Two of Swords here for the masculine as a challenge. And that's coupled with... Ha-ha! The King of Wands. All right. So the challenge here is indecisiveness when it comes to stepping into... Um, into a decisive energy into an energy that of confidence and knowing what you want and going after it the two of swords is I, I i really feel like this new moon in terms for the masculine collective was the challenge here was identifying what you want and going for it like what do you truly want masculine and this is not talking about what other people want you to want no what do you want what do you want masculine how have you been deceiving yourself with the seven of swords against this judgment that has been uh, this 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 call that's been put out to you with judgment your higher self has been calling to you has calling for you to be authentic and is calling for you to actually to finally identify what it is you truly want in your life and what are you going to do to go after it Okay. The, uh, now, now this doesn't mean that you go after it with with that with reckless abandon, without any uh, any um, regard to the people that are around you that you might affect. But at the same time, if you're in a situation where you're not fulfilled, you're depleted, taken advantage of, and you're, or you're just not doing it what it is what you truly want to be doing, then you have every right to put an end to that and move in the direction that you actually want. To go in, okay? That is the challenge for the divine math for the masculine collective. Okay. The closing message for the masculine collective in terms of this new moon in Aries, the high priestess. Coupled with <laughs> the eight of cups. Yeah. Walking away. And the high priestess is either about um, it is about secrets. Um, it's also about uh, intuition, and I also often see this as like divine uh, uh, downloads from the divine, downloads from the universe. 
secret knowledge, knowledge that might have been hidden to you in the past. There could be some situations where there are some masculine energies or, or, or um, people are working from their masculine energy and are walking away from things, from situations that are just too secretive, um, walking out of situations in which you are kept a secret in some way. Um, that would be, that, I think that would really be, well, the ma that would be the masculine energy coming forward in a certain individual and saying, no, this will not fly. I will be no one's secret and we are going to move away from this situation now, okay? Um, this is also following your intuition in order to move in a direction that is better suited for you, okay? And I just want to look, there's more mirroring here in the sense that for the feminine collective, her final closing message was the Queen of Cups, okay? This was her embodying more of her intuitive nature. For the masculine collective, it is the High Priestess, which is the only other card in, or only other individual in the deck of the Tarot that is um, intuitively, psychically aware than uh, uh, like the Queen of Cups. The High Priestess is Major Arcana, so she's going to be more, she's going to be like the ultimate embodiment of um, psychic awareness and psychic ability, but the one right under her would be the Queen of Cups, okay? So you have both of these for the masculine and feminine. I think that's really, really cool. So for the for the feminine, it is on an, inter it's on an embodiment, on a physical level, where she's embodying this intuitive, being. For the masculine, it is still very much a spiritual reality for the masculine, okay? But in, even still, you're still kind of embodying it in the sense that you're taking action from um, intuitive guidance, okay? Or if you have, if you're not taking that action right now, you are being set up to do so, okay? All right, I'm going to get some closing guidance here from the Crystal Mandala deck, and then we're going to get a closing message from the... Lightworker. Okay. And as always, when I use the Crystal Mandala deck, I mentioned that if you would like to purchase any of these crystals in order to help you integrate the message, to work with the crystal, even if you're just drawn to it in any way, I highly recommend you do so. All right, Spirit. So let's see, please. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, all right, cool. We've got it. We've got it. And this, that, that one wants to come out too. Yep. Okay. We've got three of Oh, no. We've got four of them, guys. Okay. So on the bottom of the deck, we do have Purification. Um, Black Tourmaline and Angel Laviel. Okay. And that actually is it falls right in line with what I was experiencing and what others have been saying about this in it being kind of like a, a full moon cycle. Purification is the purging, is the release of situations that block your manifestations. Okay, so that's quite on point here. We've got <laughs> Goddess Kali and Black Obsidian, Sacred Revolution. We've got Archangel Ad Adnachio and Tiger's Eye. Tiger Spirit Rises. We've got, sorry guys, I don't know if you can hear that music from the street. Anyway, we've got uh, Ascended Master Buddha and Peridot, Wild Compassion. Oh, there's the music again. And finally, we've got Goddess Zi Wang Mu and Strom Stromatolite, Rare Success. All right, already, obviously, that card, Rare Success, is speaking to the um, extreme manifestation potential that has been put into place with this new moon. It's really kind of awesome. We're going to start with card number 46. And I'm not going to read too much from these because we do have four cards here. I don't want to make this too, too long. We're almost an hour into this reading. But if you're still with us, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, here we go. A Sacred Revolution. We bring you the empowerment of Sacred Revolution. Revolution comes when a cycle of authority or power is ending. It has become inadequate for the task of leadership now required, and a new order must be established in its place. It is not simply a chapter within a book drawing to a close, but an entirely new book, perhaps an entirely new genre, opening up according to divine will unfolding. In such cases, subtle change is not going to cut it. You need radical action to bring about the new order. That new order may be in your world or may be in your own being. 
When revolution is sacred, the new order will be that which allows you to become more of yourself to successfully attain your spiritual goals. Perfect. I mean, right on point. Next, we're going to go into Tiger Spirit Rises, card number 13. All right, Tiger Spirit Rises. We bring you the gift of the Tiger Spirit Rising. You are being empowered with a truth more potent than fear. Your spirit is rapidly expanding beyond what opinion and logic can contain. It needs to be free to run wild with divine grace in the world. Your life, your destiny, your divine fulfillment requires that you have the courage to roar for love, to refuse to be put down, to respect yourself, and to let your untamed loving heart be free. Your spirit creates a field of divine electricity through your body and mind that can liberate others from conformity and social conditioning, allowing them to break away from systems based in control and fear. Your tiger spirit rises. You excite and empower the tiger spirit in others to rise above conditioning as they discover the wild divine spirit being they are in truth. Excellent. Love that message. Next, we have card number 32, Wild Compassion. Give me just a second, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry, guys. Um, I just... I <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I just got a text message that was pretty intense. Okay, card number 32, Wild Compassion. Here we go. We bring you the blessing of wild compassion. What if a restriction now could prepare you to receive greater freedom in the, in the not too distant future and to be able to appreciate, enjoy, and fully receive that freedom? What if growing pains now would strengthen you to be ready to receive a life-changing opportunity headed in your way? What if rest and time to just be at this moment would help you build up your reserves of vital energy for a time in the future when you will be asked to step up, perhaps to lead, or use your energy in a way to support many? Wild compassion is at work in your life, and you can trust that it knows what you need and when, and will deliver it with unsurpassed grace. Mm -hmm. I love it. And finally, we have card number 53, Rare success. Yes, honey. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm being silly. Okay. Rare success. We bring you the empowerment of rare success. You are bringing something utterly unique, special, and precious to the world. Whilst there are creations that are worthwhile and valuable, which can manifest swiftly, there are others that are labors of love requiring diligence, strength, and long-term commitment to bring them to life in the world. These exquisite conditions are the divine manifestations of rare success, that, sh that which shall stand the test of time and offer a legacy of comfort, encouragement, and divine grace for generations to come. That, that is, a, is an extremely powerful and beautiful message. So I just want to get one card in closing from the Lightworker Oracle. All right, Spirit. One card in closing, please. Closing message for this new moon in Aries, please, Spirit. There we go. Okay. Where is this one? All right. Closing message. We have 10. Wow. Okay. Card number 10 power of the divine masculine this i have been working with this deck for quite some time now and this card has never come out and it's really very interesting because there's definitely an energy uh, 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 there's definitely a, a masculine energy throughout this reading okay 
especially for the feminine, because the feminine is really taking power, taking control, taking her power back and doing, taking the action steps she needs to take in order to make her meet her manifestations. And the masculine is obviously doing the same thing in that it would here with the fool and the page of swords, excuse me, the fool and the page of swords, um, trying to figure out what it is they need to do in order to take the leap of faith. Fantastic. Let's just read from the book real quick here. Card number 10, Power of the Divine Masculine. An empowering energy seeks expression from within. It wishes to free you from confusion, paralysis, and stagnancy. It seeks to stir you into, un into conscious chosen action, greater discipline, and focus. It's time to end the frustration of repeating old patterns. <laughs> Yes, you are ready to break through into a new way of life. Feel inspired, be energized, and focus on your dreams and desires. Take steps to manifest them on the physical plane. Believe your success is inevitable. I mean, perfect. You could, that's such a powerful, perfect closing message. I really don't even want to say anything else from there. Okay, guys? So, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this helped you understand a little bit of what was going on, if this resonated with you. If it didn't resonate with you, then I guess it just wasn't a message for you, but thank you for tuning in anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you all again sometime soon. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.